247 million people live in a different country to where they were born, and migrant workers send almost $600 billion around the globe each year, according to the World Bank. The industry they've created is being shaken up by digital remittance companies who want to charge less and move money faster. Today we're joined by Matt Oppenheimer, CEO and co-founder of Remitly. I'm Angela Corp. Welcome to The Business Debate. Matt, thank you for joining us at the London Stock Exchange studios today. Great to be here. Now, when we talk about remittances and moving money, traditionally people think about taking money physically into a bank. But companies like yours are completely transforming the way money is sent around the globe. Here's the amazing thing. Uh, over 7.5% of remittances are taken in, in fees, and that's $60 billion uh, globally. What's wonderful about digital devices is we can not only take a lot of the fees and costs out of the equation, but we can offer a much better customer experience to customers that have really moved thousands of miles away from their loved ones, thousands of miles away from their family, with the idea of having a better life, having higher income so they could send back and support them. And we're so excited that now is finally the time where customers are getting smartphones, trusting smartphones to be able to support their loved ones back home. And what sort of an impact is this making on developing countries? So before I started the business, I was living in Nairobi, Kenya. And what I saw in Kenya was locally there was a domestic payment system called M-Pesa that was transforming the economy. So when people would move to Nairobi and need to get money back to their family in the country, uh, before M-Pesa, they would give money to a matatu driver, a public bus driver, and they would kind of hope it would get back to their family, and oftentimes it wouldn't. And the same principle applies now, as I saw with international payments, to be able to leverage mobile phones for financial services. And what's amazing and what's so powerful is those customers that I mentioned, 70% of the remittances they send are used for things like basic needs for their families back home. And the 600 billion in remittances that are sent every year are multiples larger than things like global foreign aid. And so what I really love about this business is honoring, supporting our customers that are making this amazing sacrifice, and also by doing that, making a really positive impact on the world. And why do you concentrate on just a few countries? Why not take on the global market? So what's amazing is everyone talks about the 600 billion that is uh, sent every year. And when you break that down, what you see is that uh, the vast majority is sent between fewer, larger corridors, meaning country A to country B. So if you take the US, for example, which is the largest remittance market, over half, 52%, is sent to just five countries. And so you see that similar phenomenon globally given where people move and migrate. And our focus has really been, let's focus on the biggest corridors, let's focus on the product, the customer experience, uh, similar to how Facebook did early days when they focused just on colleges or universities, Amazon focused on books. And by doing that, we really are building a big global business and global footprint, but it starts and ends with the customer. And you're expanding into Europe now as well. So Remitly started in the U.S. where we're sending over $2 billion a year, which makes us the largest independent digital money transmitter in the U.S. We're really excited to take that foundation to Europe, and we're really excited to be offering our product in the U.K. Uh, it's the fifth largest uh, immigrant uh, population uh, in the globe. 8.5 million immigrants uh, live in the U.K., and they send over 19 billion pounds every year. And so we're really excited to offer that product uh, to customers in the U.K. and to expand across Europe. This is all smartphone based and digital. Many of us are still very wary of using our smartphones to pay our bills or send money. We're not sure that these transactions are secure. What are you doing to allay customers' fears and make those really secure transactions? Security is the number one priority, and I understand how a customer, if they used to go to a physical branch, well, it's not con as convenient. You can't, on a Friday night, if you're sending to your loved one in the Philippines, pull out your phone and have it delivered there instantly. Um, the branch might be closed. The branch and, and branch network had a human component where you'd go and give physical cash. And going to a digital option can be scary. And so the, what we have done is we have, first and foremost, made security the absolute top priority because it's the foundation for how we build trust with customers. And then we've layered on a bunch of features, uh, things like Touch ID, that actually make it a much more secure, you know, with biometrics, customer experience, and a much better customer experience. We also just as table stakes in this industry, have gone out early days and gotten all the appropriate licenses from global regulators such that we're secure, compliant, regulated, which is something we're really proud to do because that's how we maintain uh, trust with customers. Do you see a day where it will be 100% digital? I think it is rapidly shifting digital, and I break it out between the kind of sender of remittances and the receiver. And what you see with the sender right now is it's rapidly shifting mobile and digital. As more people trust it, as they see, they can send 24-7, you know, within minutes to... Uh, with remitly 40,000 cash pickup locations or any major bank uh, to millions of bank accounts within minutes. That is rapidly shifting mobile. 
On the receive side, there still is an adoption curve that's happening. And so that's why we have that cash out network. That's why we can deposit into bank accounts. I think it'll take some time on the receive side, but on the send side, we're going to be you know, fully digital uh, before we know it. And you're expecting the bigger players in your market to follow your lead? Well, I hope so. I think that it's hard for big companies to change. And we're really excited about being pioneers in this industry in terms of leading that shift to digital, leading that customer focus, really focusing on the product and customer experience, the security that I mentioned. And if the big players want to you know, try to kind of play catch up uh, with the road that we're paving, um, then they can play catch up. Or at the end of the day, really just focused on building a, a really globally transformational business that changes this industry. Matt, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And join us next time on The Business Debates when we'll be discussing the future of urban life. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.